Hi, I'm Sophie. I have three golden retrievers. I have Mia, Lola and Poppy and I feed them a traditional way, well a kibble and a little bit of tin tripe to put on the top to make it look like meat. But I know a number of people who have converted and gone over to feeding their dogs on raw meat. So I'm quite interested as into like the pros and cons of raw feeding and whether it's worth doing. So I thought I'd make this video to look at both sides of the story. So, lamb ribs, very, very easy to cut up. If you get yourself a good strong pair of scissors. This pair of scissors is ideal. You can cut right the way through the bone. So there's still some leaf on these, not an enormous amount, but enough that it can be legitimately called a meaty bone. That's not lamb meat, that's one of these sausages. Okay, so some bones here. We've got this is a raw food dog sausage. It's just minced up dog meat in an 80-10-10 blend. This is definitely on the more expensive side of raw food. Feeding your dogs raw like this, if you have large dogs, can become prohibitively expensive. The uh, ox liver that I showed you before, we cut it up just using these scissors into nice big chunks like this. This super stinky stuff is green tripe. Dogs absolutely love it and I'm not going to lie, it stinks. This counts as muscle meat. It is really, really good for your dogs. You can see how it's got this weird furry texture on one side. This is basically intestine from a ruminant animal. Green tripe, not the white boiled tripe you can get from the butchers. That has no nutritional value whatsoever. This green tripe stinks. It genuinely does. But the dogs absolutely love it. So when you're doing an 80-10-10 mix, what that means is 80%, 10%, 10%, or you could call it 80-10-5-5. I'll explain why. 80% stands for muscle meat. So that would be things like this, the tripe. Um, then when you buy minces that have an 80-10-10, they will already be mixed up for you. So. This is some 80-10-10 mints. It's got green tripe in it, see? Also has duck meat. It also has duck bone. There's a big bit of bone there. And it also has the last 10%, which I split into 5-5, which is 5% liver and 5% other secreting organs. If you're doing a DIY raw, which is much cheaper, you can actually make that mix up yourself. 80% meat, 10% meaty bone, 10% um, organs, of which 5% should be liver, and the rest should be other secreting organs. You can also add raw eggs, kefir, um, bone broth, you can add fruit and veg. Some people insist that you must. Some people say you don't need to at all. I alternate. One week I will give them food with fruit and veg. Another week I might not. Depends what I happen to have about. I DIY raw feed. So that means that I measure out my 80-10-10 myself. And then I will steam or blend vegetables to add in if I'm going to. Sometimes they, as I say, get an egg. Sometimes they get kefir as well. These are just straight proteins. Sometimes they get fish. 
I try to vary the proteins as much as possible based on what I've been able to get from the butchers or from local farm shops and farmers for as cheap as possible. Also during game season, you can try and get yourself as much uh, game meat as you can. Quite often they'll be giving their uh, carcasses away for free because they have to pay by the kilo to have that stuff removed. So you're doing the gamekeepers a favor. So the next thing we will do is weigh it out. My dogs get 450 grams twice a day. So 80% of 450 grams is 360. So muscle meat or tripe, we want 360 grams. 330, of course. So I now need to do 45 grams of meaty bone. almost exactly bang on and then we need another 45 of uh, the organ meat so half of that will be in liver and the other half will be in kidney give me a second because I've got to get my hand dirty again so having cleaned the counters down wash my hands which you must always make sure you do when you're dealing with raw food raw meat just thought I'd get some other bits out of the freezer, show you what the dogs are having tomorrow. Tomorrow, they are having whole gutted quail, that's with the feather on, and the feet on. It's just literally a whole quail, head and all, feathers on, feet on, and we defrost them because they've been gutted, so they're opened up down the middle. So in order to get the dog's attention, I'll just sort of unfold them like a book. That's tomorrow. This is just feather colouring, by the way. Different colour feathers, see? Nothing alarming there. Um, these are some of the 801010s I buy for when I'm struggling to find DIY stuff. They have these, so this is a minced rabbit. I don't give this too many days in a row because minced rabbit is very, very, very lean. So if they're having minced rabbit, they need to have something else as well because otherwise they'll actually start to lose weight. But they do thoroughly enjoy it. And when we can get whole rabbit, we do. This one is a minced beef and tripe. Again, this is another 80-10-10. Minced beef and try it. This is minced turkey. Minced turkey. These are both 80 10 10s, and I have minced chicken 80 10 10s in the freezer as well. So, this is what I tend to do. And literally, you can defrost these overnight. There's 450 grams here, so that's basically one meal. So, mix and match, that would be one day's food for one dog. So, what we'll do is they'll have a couple of gutted quail each and then they'll have the rest made up with the minced beef and tripe and then I've still got some of that liver and kidney left over to add in. The beauty of giving whole prey animals like this is that it basically has a really really good 80-10-10 mix especially if it's still with guts in. If it doesn't have the guts in then I will add kidney and liver to make up for the fact that it's been gutted but the meat and the meaty bone aspect is all there feathers are actually quite useful as a natural wormer so it actually does them quite a lot of good to just eat the whole lot so having got this lot into containers to defrost what i will do is they will be put in the fridge when i go to bed tonight but they'll defrost out on the counter until bedtime and then the last thing to do is to clean down the counters. There are two dogs and one cat's meal for this evening, all ready to go. And now I clean the counter down, anti back. And I'll let that sit for a couple of minutes before cleaning it away so that it has a chance to kill any bacteria 
And then once I've done that, I will once again give my hands a thorough washing. And then I'm done. No cross-contamination, no worries. Just exactly as if you were cooking raw meat for yourself. Um, cooking from raw meat for yourself, for your family. You just make sure that you clean up and wash your hands thoroughly when you're done. Which they would enjoy. My two power chewers can get through one of these in about sort of 10 minutes each, but they really, really enjoy the chew. And of course, chewing with a uh, nutritional reward like this actually helps your dog to release dopamine into their uh, brains and it calms them and relaxes them and it helps them to settle themselves down. This is a beef braid. It looks a little bit like rawhide. It is not rawhide. I never ever would let my dogs have rawhide ever because they use too many chemicals and bleaches in that and it gets very dangerous and dogs simply cannot digest rawhide. <clears throat> this is just um, air dried beef skin, which has then been plaited together. You can see there's still some sort of meaty goodness in under there. The dogs really, really enjoy these. This is called paddywhack. This is a really, really tough strip of muscle that run down the back of a cow's neck. Um, and then this is, again, air dry. You can hear that sound properly solid. This takes them a little while to get through. So they're quite thick. But again, completely natural. No additives, no preservatives. And much less stinky than, for example, this. The Moonbane and the Paddywhack, actually not particularly stinky. This looks a little bit greasy, but definitely not even as greasy as a, a pig's ear or a cow's ear would be. Um, this isn't even the slightest bit greasy, but they can be a little bit on the stinky side. Paddywhack, not greasy, not stinky. These are the sort of things that I normally take if we're going to a pub or restaurant and I want the dogs to be kept occupied, except I get the giant version, which would be sort of <laughs> this long, just to keep them occupied. But it doesn't stink, so it doesn't disturb the other patrons of the pub or restaurant. And then the dogs are quite happy under the table, chewing on their own thing while we're having dinner. dog food. It comes delivered to the doorstep around and leave it there and um, so it's two bags of Purina and the top one is the tin food which I'm mixing. So this is how I do my dog food. Here they are waiting for the dinner. So I buy this Purina dog food chicken flavour which it says it has no artificial colours, flavours, preservatives. So that dog food is 28% chicken meal. Even then, it's not. Look all the other things it's got in it. It's got co wheat and corn in it as well. If you can see that label there. And it has a lot of ingredients. So, and this is their dog food, which is 8% eight and a half percent protein so it must have water added and it's tripe loaf so i put this on top so it looks like it's meat and it's got a smell to it because they don't like kibble just on its own and they have one of those tins a day so between three dogs so they live on it's probably a pound a day uh, for each dog so it is a lot cheaper, although the price of dog food has gone up since Brexit, but it's still a lot cheaper than feeding your dog raw. And it's, to me, it's just a convenience actually. I do have this oil, Scottish salmon oil. And I give, this is mainly for Mia because she's an older dog and it's meant to help her joints. So I give her a squirt of that um, in her meals. And that's the only other thing I do actually. If I want to give them treats, I'll show you the treats. So for dog treats, I get this, which is just ordinary ham and you can have it in sandwiches or with pasta or anything. So I can eat like about half of that and dogs eat half as treats. Just put in a little pouch thing, one of, whoops, one of these, hooks it onto my waist 
And uh, so I just think, isn't that simple? It's just the convenience, but maybe the other way is healthier. The main issue is gastric problems. A lot of dogs have digestive problems from eating kibble and that's because it's got fillers in it. It might only be 20% meat and the rest of it is made up with wheat and grains and they wouldn't be a part of a dog's natural diet if it was living out in the wild. A dog would not be eating wheat. So it's those fillers that make dogs have um, gastric infections, inflammations, um, they can have ongoing diarrhea and also they can add, they, some people think it's a cause of weight gain and dogs put on a lot of weight and then that causes joint problems. If you feed your dog on a raw diet you will know, especially if you do the do-it-yourself option, you will know exactly what your dog's eating. Okay, so you'll know exactly, you can look at your dog's poo and you can see, oh, dog's had too much bone this week, if the poo looks a bit white. Um, also, you'll know exactly that, you'll know your dog hasn't had any additives, that it's only had like the best quality food. And you've got control over exactly what your dog's eating. So for some people that's really important, they want their dog to have absolutely the best diet. If you think of it with ch your children, would you give your children chicken nuggets and chips every day or McDonald's every day I don't know you know it's not the best diet to have every single day is it so why would you feed your dog something that's got lots of fillers in it that's the argument um, there's also an argument for giving your dogs bones I do sometimes give my dogs bones and that bones can clean their teeth um, especially if you've got to make sure your dogs are used to eating bones I know they can choke on a bone but if you start your dogs on bones when they're puppies then they shouldn't ever choke on a bone um, also you can give them soft bones like duck necks I gave my duck, dogs duck necks a few weeks ago and they loved them or um, chicken feet's another one any raw chicken is a really soft bone and whenever I have puppies I always get them chicken carcasses they just absolutely love chicken carcasses um, I've had problems with one of my dogs she's had um, skin problems and they were actually fixed by changing uh, her diet so there's definitely some foods that at some point they can trigger a skin problem um, they can have like problems with their ears they can have problems with the skin like a rash on their skin a lot of that is actually linked to an allergy to something in the food they're eating so obviously that won't happen with raw food actually this is what people say dogs have more energy and they have a shinier coat so I'll try to find a picture here of um, my friend's dogs I do think her dogs have a better coat than my dogs have so I mean and it's like if you look at a person if you want to see if a person's healthy you would look at their hair and their skin and that's an indicator of how healthy that person is a lot of the time so with your dogs maybe if your dogs got a really good coat maybe they're healthier than the next dog next to them it doesn't have such a good coat so here I'll show you exactly how you work out the DIY option right if you buy the food ready-made you'd have to buy it in big quantities and you'd have to have a second freezer if you do the DIY option well I think you still have a second freezer and probably one shelf in your fridge but you can there's a formula for the DIY 80% meat and that includes the meat includes fish and eggs so you can do um, like a raw egg every second day so 10% bone and that's mostly soft bone 5% uh, liver and 5% other offal so that's the formula and you should weigh it up um, also you can do some of that you can do as treats when you dog training so you can spread out their meals so they're not just having two big meals during the day you can also include fruit and vegetables um, they don't have to be cooked specially they can just be the you know when you're cooking for your own family you can just cook some extra food like uh, green beans or carrots something like that dogs like they also really like blueberries um, you have to be careful with apple pips apple pips are poisonous but um, there's a lot of, of fruit yeah bananas berries dogs love a lot of things you can just add little bits in makes their food more interesting actually I do think the meals look 
the meals have more bits to them compared to my dogs they have exactly the same meal twice a day non-stop really they don't have a lot of variety in their food so another problem is bones as i mentioned before and whether your um your dog is used to bones if the whether they now have to chew the bones properly i think bones can do a lot of damage to a dog's teeth if they're really really chewy um and like i'm gonna like chew the bones to nothing some dogs will leave a bone once they've got the meat off it but other dogs will keep on and on chewing no matter how hard the bone is and then they can splinter their teeth which can lead to an infection or missing teeth so that there can be a problem there also certain bones can splinter like if they're weight bearing bones like a marrow bone which is quite a thick bone that sort of bone can splinter um, so you're better off really with softer bones like ones from poultry but to me it seems quite complicated okay you've got to balance things up you have to get stuff out the freezer defrost everything in time it's it's time consuming because you have to source all this food you have to get it out the freezer you have to defrost it you have to chop it up um to me it's quite complicated also I know I know it's not like the best quality dog food but it's like if it says on the packet balanced dog food and you know your dog needs all these vitamins vitamin I don't know, like vitamin D calcium all the rest you just you can just like be a bit naive I suppose and just hope for the best you know trust what it says on the packet rather than yeah, I suppose like if you're doing baby food and you buy ready-made baby food and you're trusting that it's got already made baby powder or something for the milk you know you're trusting what it says on the packet and that it's a, a complete food for your dog but just the idea of trying to work out like something like vitamin D because like I get vitamin D from the Sun but dogs don't they have to have eggs and fish so you have to work out exactly how much vitamin D they need and work out for the weight of the dog and exactly how much you need to feed them each day. Not many vets will recommend raw food. Maybe if you had like, like some vets who've been like, maybe vets who've got a lot of experience with dogs um, might say if your dog's a lot of gastric problems, they might say try feeding them raw food. But very few. They always worry about whether your dog will be getting a balanced diet. And then they also worry about cross contaminations in the kitchen. You have to be really careful, especially when you're dealing with raw um, poultry. Um, then also, the dog's saliva and poo will have more bacteria in it than if they're not fell, if they're not um, fed on raw meat. So you could have more potentially. You could have more E. coli. You could have a higher chance of E. coli or salmonella because you have all this raw meat in your kitchen. So it, theoretically it could be more unhealthy for your family, especially if you have people with health problems, immunosuppressed, elderly, small children in your household. Um, but then perhaps you normally cook raw meat for your family, so having raw meat in the kitchen is not that unusual. Um, and then the chances of, of you getting the dog's saliva on your hand and then putting it into your mouth and then getting salmonella from that it's a really small risk um, if you even have a, a pack dog a therapy dog goes into schools or any of like the guide dogs any assistance dogs they are not allowed to be fed on raw meat for that reason in case there's that risk of saliva or um, even if there's a bit of dog poo on the coat, the possibility of E. coli or salmonella coming from raw meat onto your your uh, skin and then into your mouth. So there is a very small health risk there. Okay, <clears throat> you need to be organised, which obviously I'm not, but you need to have a super organised fridge and freezer. Some people have a second freezer or a giant freezer, like one of those chest freezers out in the garage and they get like a ton of raw meat delivered. Um, where I live there's a group about gamekeepers, right? And when the gamekeepers like 
shoot some animals but you can have the carcasses for free a lot of people for convenience they just get it delivered ready prepared in blocks like this and on the label it says it's a balanced diet or another of the main issues with raw feeding is the cost so if you're doing a DIY option you can go down to £1.50 a day but if you're going to find um, a gamekeeper in the season Another problem is, what do you do when you go on holiday? Somebody like me, I try and travel in my camper van for three or four months of the year. So how would I get frozen dog food? Okay, it would be like impossible. I mean, not frozen dog food or raw meat. It would be impossible for me to keep my dog's diet the same. So I buy exactly the same dog food. When I go to France, um, I buy Purina dog food and I know they have Purina dog food in France. And so they're not, I take some of mine from home and I take a week to switch from the English, although you're not allowed, right, according to like, because of Brexit, you're not actually allowed to take um, meat products from outside an EU country into the EU. But most people do manage to smuggle in a bit of dog food with them when they uh, cross the cha English Channel. So I would give my dog food, my raw, um, my Purina dog food, I would take that with me and a couple of tins that my dogs uh, have um, and then I would gradually change it over a week and I buy all their dog food at Carrefour so it's always the same dog food and when I go to Spain they have Carrefour, Carrefour there as well so I make sure I don't ever change their diet because I think a lot of the why dogs have digestive problems is because people keep changing their diets and following different fads and trying different things but um, and if you change dog food a lot in the dog's first year can lead them to have a sensitive tummy but yeah so for me that's an advantage of using conventional dog food um, although the dog tins would be different and also the dog tins you get in, in um, France and Spain are the giant tins they're not the ordinary tins like we have uh, in the UK thanks for watching guys please leave me a comment below tell me what you think um, I'm sure there's some points that I've missed and there's some um, interesting comments that you'd like to add and tell me how you feed your dogs it, it is a really important debate to have um, it's it's not just about the cost it's not just about convenience there's lots of other health issues as well so let me know what your experiences are thanks very much bye